Here's a 1989 Lincoln Town Car. I was able to get the floor evened out a little bit more with the mallet here. But I'm going to keep having to keep pound on it to get it back exactly to where it should be. I did figure out how to uh, disarm the alarm system on here. But the weird thing is that you can put the key in and turn it. And the starter motor will crank the engine. And it'll act like it's going to start or keep running. But as soon as you let go of the key, the engine dies. But the weird thing is, is that when I use an alligator clip lead between the positive battery terminal and the starter solenoid uh, activation terminal and I turn the key on at the ignition, leave it in the the run position and then just uh, hot wire it to start to uh, crank the starter, the car starts up and keeps running fine. So I'm not sure with what the problem is there. There's still something that's it must be something that's going on as the key returns from the crank to the run position. But the weird thing is that when the key is, if the key is turned on and then the starter solenoid is engaged externally, it'll keep running. So it's something I still need to, to uh, figure out. I had a suggestion about checking the throttle valve bushings. And this is what helps tell the automatic transmission to shift. If you look back here, let's see if we can see it in there. Here's the control rod for the AOD transmission. And it looks like on this one, let's see if we can see it here. It looks like they put a brass throttle valve bushing and cotter pin, or it's kind of like an E-clip, on the AOD linkage. And on the old C6, I think this has got either a C6 or an FMX, that function's done with vacuum, I believe. It's got a vacuum tube that goes from the transmission up to the intake manifold. And I noticed when that vacuum line came disconnected one time, this car would not shift past second gear. So I'm thinking that it, on this one, maybe some uh, Ford experts could just confirm that, that the AOD throttle valve linkage has been properly fixed. Now we're going to take a look at this poor old maroon Grand Marquis over here. And this thing is a victim of throttle valve failure. And we'll go in and take a look at it here. And poor little naive me, when I was about 21 years old, I had no knowledge of the AOD or the throttle valve or anything. And when this car wouldn't shift gears anymore, I was also a, a poor young person. And I, I even took this to mechanics and they said, oh, I can't find anything wrong with the transmission. Well, let me show you what happened with this car. Notice here that the AOD kickdown linkage has totally fallen off. The throttle valve fell apart. I think it was plastic originally. But you'll see over here, these are the two cables. One's from the accelerator pedal, one's from the cruise control to open the throttle valve, or to open the throttle plate. And then here's the AOD, here's the AOD linkage, which is completely falling off due to that bad bushing. And 10 years of working on cars has really taught me a lot because I just drove this poor thing. Uh, I just drove it and even though it wouldn't shift past second gear, I didn't have money for another car. I didn't have, I really didn't have money for a replacement transmission, but if somebody I took this to had been savvy to this, maybe they could have saved this car. I ended up driving this car until, and it was running at like, I don't know how many RPMs. I ended up driving it until the engine finally started banging and clanging and it had no oil pressure at all. And it drove back here just rapping and tapping and falling apart. And so eventually I would like to put in a new 302 engine and new transmission or at least take this one out of here and check for what damage was done. But if you own one of these cars, please check that throttle valve bushing. Make sure you check it and you may be able to save your, your car from the fate that happened to this one. Now this one's not 
It's not dead. <laughs> well, it is dead now, but it's going to be uh, resurrected with new components eventually. But if I'd have known about the throttle valve bushing, this car would still be driving today. One more car to check for the throttle valve bushing, and that's the 1990 Grand Marquis. This Grand Marquis is in the process of restoration. I'm going to take off the front part from the maroon one and the bumper, and eventually I, I will get the maroon car restored, but in the meantime, until I can find these parts, I think I'm going to just borrow them from the maroon car. Well, we're going to open up this car and let's check its throttle valve bushing, because this car drove just fine. It just wouldn't pass its inspection again because the, the lights are messed up on it. So, we'll open it up here and check it out. On this car, it's looking like the AOD kickdown linkage or the throttle valve linkage is still engaged. It's kind of hard to see it here. But, it looks like it's got the brass bushing on it. Let's see if we can see down in there. It's kind of hard to see it, but... It looks like this one will probably be okay. Before I drive this car again, I'll make a double check on it to verify, but it looks like the brass, brass bushing is in place on this car. I don't know if there was actually a recall on this or not, but I ended up finding out about it through some suggestions from comments about the Lincoln and from some independent research done on the World Wide Web. But if I had known this, I could have saved the Maroon Grand Marquis from uh, destroying its engine and transmission. So I just want to give that warning if you've got, I guess it would apply to just this, the uh, multi-port fuel injection cars. I don't know if the, if the central fuel injection or the carbureted versions using the AOD still had that kind of uh, bushing. But I know on these cars, at least uh, on these ones with multi-port fuel injection and 302s, that it definitely is a problem.